Hey, it's Curious Beast. I probably should have entitled this video <clears throat> my most recent lecture instead of my last one because I'll probably give, be given it a few more times before I, I finally hang it up. The other day, uh, somebody came over to visit and uh, they were talking about uh, things that were going on in the world and how confusing it was for them and how they really didn't know what they were going to do. And then they started talking about some uh, legislation that they didn't like that uh, had come down uh, through the Obama administration, through Obamacare. And I was letting them talk, you know, and, and finally they kind of wrapped it all up and I said, oh, I really don't know what I'm going to do. And frankly, this latest thing coming out of the Obama administration is socialism. Well, I did something that, that's kind of out of character for me because um, in my personal life, uh, people often tell me, they say, well, you're really laid back and you're tolerant of other people's views. And, and I hope that's true. I looked at this person and I just said, you think? And she was kind of surprised and she kind of looked at me for a moment. And I said, it, as far as what you're going to do or what you need to do, I've been telling you that stuff for years, and you won't do it. And what I'm telling you is just plain sense. Uh, it's stuff that our ancestors here have done for generations. You keep a pantry. You keep protection in the house. You keep a little bit of gold and silver in case the paper money turns worthless like it did in the Republic or during the Confederacy. Um, they're just plain sense things, and you either do them or you don't. Now, as far as socialism goes, I'm going to explain this to you one more time. There are two basic types of socialists. There are collectivist socialists and they're fascists. In this country, the collectivist socialists have usurped the Democratic Party. The fascists have usurped the Republican Party. And together, they have usurped the government, the media, the financial system, the educational system, and just about every aspect of life in this country. There is a huge body of evidence there. You can go see it for yourself. And if you don't see it, that's on you. And socialism is just the first stage of totalitarianism like it has been in every other single country that's gone down that path. Your country is turning into a police state. You can either accept it, or you can't, or you don't. And then I said something else that was out of character for me. I said, you need to go. Now, after this person left, I finally accepted some things I've been feeling about her for a long time. And not just her, because she is not any different than any other adult that I have in my life. Um, she's quite typical, actually. And I realized something, that these people are going to be liabilities. And when stuff hits the fan, they're going to have little or nothing to bring to the table with them. And lately, I've been watching these folks who are doing quite well, still doing okay now, slowly becoming unhinged as they watch things falling apart bit by bit around them. And when they do come, they're not going to be saying, oh, you were right. I was wrong. What do I do now? What's going to happen is they're going to be like this. And everything that you, all dealings with them are going to be like this, back and forth, back and forth. And personally, I can't deal with that. Um, I don't have the patients, or the resources to float an entire community of people. I just don't. Maybe your situation is different. I was talking on the phone yesterday with a friend of mine. His name's Corey. And we were talking about uh, things that we were going to, we saw coming down the pike. And one thing uh, we were talking about is uh, how people were almost kind of disappointed collapse hasn't hit yet, and they're also wondering exactly when it's going to hit. And <clears throat> what I said is that 
conspiracy wingnut types, um, a lot of times they get the story right, but they get the timing wrong, including myself. Um, and it's because we tend to forget two basic things. <clears throat> One is that sometimes things don't go out with a bang. They go out with a whimper. Plus, we're dealing with governmental entities, and a lot of times governmental entities take forever to do anything, including dying. And then, as I was finishing up the phone call with him, <clears throat> he asked me how I thought things were going to be going on, and, and I said, no, I don't think they'll be as bad, that bad. And then after I got off the phone, I, I thought, why on earth did you tell him that? Why did you say that? Um, and I ended up going out for a walk, thinking about it. And I realized why I did say that. And why I did say that is, when I think of what I see coming down the road, in terms of myself, I have some apprehension and some nervousness. Um, but for the most part, I, I feel like things will work out in the long run. It'll be okay. And when I think about what I see going on around me and everybody else, then I get really bad feelings. I get really, really bad feelings about it. So I guess that's why I said that. I noticed that uh, in a lot of videos I've been watching that uh, uh, Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged is a really popular topic. And to be honest with you, it has been a long time since I read Atlas Shrugged. I've read it a few times, actually. Um, the three things that stick out in my mind consciously are, one, <clears throat> I remember what the smart folks did. Two, I remember that there's more than one way to conceal yourself. And three, I remember what happened to Dagny Taggart's assistant. And that's kind of a cautionary message. And uh, if you're wondering what I'm referring to, just look at the last scene in the book where it's mentioned. And also, that's the scene that was portrayed in a way on the cover of the very first edition of Atlas Shrugged, which you can see on Wikipedia. So I hope everybody gives that due consideration. Now, for most of you who are watching uh, this video, you already know what you need to do. You're either deciding whether or not you should go ahead with it, or if you've decided that you should, you're wondering when exactly you should do it. Well, individual circumstances vary, so I can't give you an answer for that. Now, if you haven't figured out exactly what you need. That was your clue. Lastly, I've had this poem, and it's been going through my head for months, and it's by Emily Dickinson. It's really short, and I'm going to recite it for you. So here's how it goes. Now is the hour of lead, remembered if outlived, like freezing persons, recollect the snow. First chill, then stupor, and then the letting go. Thank you for watching. I'm glad that you're here.